Hey, what's up everyone? Game Dad here, coming at you guys with part two of my NES collection. Now, last time we took a look at a bunch of games and it's gonna be the same thing this time. We're gonna dive in and see what's next in the collection. Championship Bowling was released by Athena in 1989, and this just takes classic bowling action, puts it on the NES, and lets you have fun, you know, throwing down, knocking down a few pins in the lane. Chippendale Rescue Rangers was released by Capcom in 1990, and this is probably in my top 10 of my personal favorite NES games. I just always had a blast playing through this game, getting all the collectibles, playing as all the different characters from a TV show that I really enjoyed as a kid. City Trouble was released by Mega Cat Studios in 2018 and is one of the games that I have in my current homebrew collection. So in this game, you run around tasing people, fighting bad guys, getting collectibles, and just having a good old time. Clue Clue Land was released by Nintendo in 1985, and in this game you actually go around spinning around all these little pegs and stuff to reveal different pictures made out of coins. Once you reveal the picture, then you get to move on to the next level. It's a little weird to get used to at first, but overall it's a pretty fun game. Conquest of the Crystal Palace was released by Quest in 1990, and this was actually one of the first Nintendo games I had in my collection. My brother is the one who had the Nintendo, and eventually we ended up with this game in our collection, and I just have fond nostalgic memories of playing this as a kid. Contra was released by Konami in 1988, and I gotta say, not only was this my first introduction to the Konami code, but this game is also probably one of my top NES games of all time. I can play through this game anytime and always have a blast. Darkwing Duck was released by Capcom in 1992, and this game follows the same formula that a lot of games from Capcom did at this time. So you have some classic platforming action, you go around, you have some different collectibles. One thing that I did like about this game in particular, though, was the ability to hang by a grappling hook to help you really progress through the levels. Dash Galaxy in the Alien Asylum. This was released by Beam Software in 1990, and it gives you various different puzzle aspects. You get to move different blocks around, find different things, but then it takes you from a top-down game into a side-scrolling game, so it's kind of fun to see a mix of both. Days of Thunder was released by Beam Software in 1990, and I gotta say, this game is just super boring. I mean, as you can see, they did like a cool 3D kind of effect, which was neat on the NES, but overall, I mean, there's not really much to this game. Defender 2 was released by Vid Kids in 1988, and this just takes classic Defender gameplay and it gives you kind of a more modern twist on it for this era. So you have same basic gameplay, you can go back and forth, you're shooting different enemies, stuff like that, but you get some updated graphics with it. Dig Dug 2 was released by Namco in 1989, and this is another one of those games that on the NES just takes advantage of an awesome IP and makes it just new and fresh. In this game, you actually go through and you can slice off different parts of the island, as you see here. Disney's Adventures in the Magic Kingdom was released by Capcom in 1990, and this kind of is a game where you, I guess, virtually go through the Disneyland theme park, and you get to do some mini games and stuff like that. Overall, I didn't really find the game very fun, though. Donkey Kong Classics, released by Nintendo in 1988. In this NES game, it takes you through a bunch of the classic arcade modes that were available in Nintendo arcade cabinets. As you can see from the title screen, it had Donkey Kong and Donkey Kong Jr., and right here you can see some gameplay of the original Donkey Kong arcade game. The original Donkey Kong Arcade Classic Series, released by Nintendo in 1986, and this, just like the previous game, takes you through the various modes of the original Donkey Kong Arcade game, and honestly, like, I always love playing this game, so it's fun to have multiple variations in the collection. Here we have Donkey Kong 3, released by Nintendo in 1986, and this is the only one I've never actually played on an arcade machine, so this was a totally different concept for a Donkey Kong game. As you can see, it's the only appearance you have of this character that's going around doing bug spraying instead of classic Donkey Kong. 
And here we have Donkey Kong Jr. released by Nintendo in 1986. And what I like about having this one in my collection is that I actually have the original arcade machine as well of Donkey Kong Jr. And that was actually the first one that I did a full repair on. So kind of fun being able to have an NES version of an arcade machine. Up next, we have Double Dragon, released by Trade West in 1988. And this one is probably my least favorite in this trilogy of Double Dragon games on the NES. The controls were just really clunky. I didn't really like the character models, and it just wasn't that fun to me overall. Up next, we have Double Dragon 2 The Revenge, released by Acclaim in 1990. And I gotta say, out of the trilogy, this one is probably my favorite and the one that got the most gameplay time as a kid. My buddy Chris and I, we used to play this game constantly. I thought it was a little weird how you had to face the opposite direction to do kicks, but overall, super fun game. Now for the last one in the trilogy, we have Double Dragon 3 The Sacred Stones, released by Acclaim in 1991. Now, as a kid, this one did not get a lot of gameplay from me, but when I was going through and capturing footage, I found that this game was actually pretty fun. I liked the updated graphics, the controls were a little better, and you even got some new moves. Up next is Double Dribble, released by Konami in 1987, and this one is just a classic, fun basketball game on the NES. I mean, the graphics aren't great, and as you can see, it gets a little overloaded on the screen, but overall, I mean, this is a pretty fun game. I like it. Up next, we got another homebrew game. Unfortunately, I am not sure who actually made this or when it came out, but this is one of those homebrew games that I actually got from John Riggs. So this one's fun. As you can see, it's a Dr. Mario homebrew and goes through, adds a few different Zelda elements to it. Here we have an absolute classic, that is Duck Hunt, released by Nintendo in 1985. And this is, of course, a zapper game. Now, unfortunately, in capturing footage, I had no way to be able to connect a zapper up to actually show some of the ducks getting taken out. But here's some basic gameplay for you. Now, here is an absolutely fun game. This is DuckTales, released by Capcom in 1989. And this game, the graphics are awesome. The level design is great. I love the pogo stick effect whenever you're bouncing on Scrooge McDuck's cane. This game overall is just an amazing game. Up next, we got another homebrew by Mega Cat Studios released in 2018. And this is Dushlin or Dushlin. Hi. And it's essentially a Tetris game with a few new moves and effects to it, basically. But at its core, it's totally a Tetris game. Here we have a more recent pickup in my collection. That is Dino Wars Destruction of Spondylus, released by Bandai in 1990. And this game is kind of fun. It, you go around kind of platformer, Mega Man-esque, and defeating enemies, things like that. And overall, I kind of like it. And here we have yet another homebrew. That is Earthbound Beginnings, released by the Video Games Database in 2018. And this is one I ordered off of them after catching a John Riggs video. And I gotta say, this game is awesome. It's totally Earthbound on the NES. Comes with an awesome color cart, and it's just a fun game. Up next, we have Explode and Short Order, released by TOSE in 1989. And this is a combo kind of game where it's got a couple different games going on. You can see like the characters from the game kind of fighting each other to get their title on the screen. But just some fun classic Nintendo action, and you get a combo. Up next, we have Excite Bike, released by Nintendo in 1985. And this game really put like dirt bike games on the map. I mean, of course it was from the 8-bit era, and of course it was just a 2D side-scroller, but you know what? This game was awesome, and you could even design your own tracks. It was so cool. And here we have our first unlicensed game. That is The Fantastic Adventures of Dizzy, released by Comerica in 1993. And this game is your typical action platformer collectathon, but overall, not very fun, and... Yeah, that's pretty much it. Here we have a great RPG on the NES, and that is Foxanadu, released by Hudson Soft in 1989. And this one, you go through, it has a very Final Fantasy kind of vibe to it. And you collect different items. As you can see, you're starting a nice little text journey right here. And it's just fun overall.
Up next is Fester's Quest, released by Sunsoft in 1989, and this is actually my very first memory of a video game ever. I remember playing this with my brother, watching him play. He got an NES when he was a teenager, and this was one of the games that he got with it, and I remember just hours and hours of having fun with this. And here we have Fisher Price I Can Remember by Davidson Associates, released in 1990. And this one is a kind of, you know, turn the card over matching game. And I mean, it operates very slowly. I don't see how a kid could have ever had the patience for this, but, you know, basic matching stuff. Up next is Freedom Force, released by Sunsoft in 1988. And, I mean, you can get kind of an idea of what might be happening in the game, like, you know, some sort of typical disaster. they got to call in, you know, the heroes of the game. But I was having a lot of trouble getting it to get past this title screen, so I don't know a lot about it. Up next, we have Gauntlet 2, released by Tengen in 1990. And this is classic RPG almost at its finest. I wouldn't say it's the finest RPG out there, but it is still a really fun game. You go around, you collect different things, you fight off baddies, and you just have a good old-fashioned adventure. Now here we have Genghis Khan, released by Koei in 1990, and I gotta say, I did not dive that deep into this game because it is just not my cup of tea. I am not a huge fan of these old-school Dynasty Warrior Romance of the Three Kingdoms kind of games. So, here's some gameplay, but that's about it. Now here we have Ghosts and Goblins, released by Micronics in 1986. Now, this one ended up also being called Ghouls and Ghosts, or Super Ghouls and Ghosts on the Super Nintendo, and this game is awesome. It's insanely difficult, but it is so much fun, and this is a classic side-scrolling game. And the last game for this video is Ghostbusters 2, released by Imagineering in 1990, and... All I can really say about this one is at least it's not as bad as the first one. That one was crap. This one, they at least give you more of a side-scrolling kind of game, a platformer, but overall still not great. So there you have it, everyone. That is everything that is currently in part two of my NES collection. Now, have you seen any games that you currently have in your collection? Let me know down in the comments below. And while you're down there, please be sure to also hit those like and subscribe buttons, as well as that little notification bell so you get an alert every time I got a new video coming out. Now, as always, I'm Game Dad. I thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you later.